Are you listening to me? Now, now only you are aware that you are listening to me. Before you are not aware of listening to me. You're listening to me, but you're not aware of listening to me. That's the difference. Conduct was there, but there was no awareness. Are you comfortable? Those you are comfortable, I'm asking you, are you comfortable? Now you're reflecting back in yourself, saying, am I comfortable? Can you just recognize you are comfortable? And it's called you are conscious of your comfort. Before, you are comfortable, but you are not conscious of your comfortable. So you are not benefiting so much about your comfort. The nice cushions that you are sitting on, the expensive ones, is not benefiting so much. Or whatever comfortable things that you have around you that you spend a lot of money, they are not benefiting so much because you are unconscious. The moment I ask you, you begin to benefit from it. Are you uncomfortable? Now those you are uncomfortable wondering when this webcast is going to end. <laughs> now you are conscious that you are uncomfortable. When you realize you are uncomfortable, you have a greater chance to say, well, I'm here. Drew, drew here for a long way. I just, I rather just relax and stay here than struggle. That in conceptual reflection helps. It's a smart, smart thought to have. And that smart thought came out of being conscious. Or you are, you don't need a conceptual reflection. You just realize you're uncomfortable, and that realization is so lucid so much spacious, lum luminous awareness, the moment you are aware, your discomfort dissolves right away there. You are right now so comfortably with the rest of the people who have expensive cushion. Maybe you don't have it, but you're having equally comfortable time. Because comfort has nothing to do with that. It has something to do with awareness. That's what it's called. Conduct does not, the conduct not necessarily, uh, we are conscious. So the conscious conduct, though that's what it's talking. So if you're, if you're aware in a dream, if you're lucid in your dream, then you're more likely every given moment when your conducts are happening, you're more conscious, more conscious, more conscious. I'm speaking. I'm comfortable. I'm nervous. I'm aware. Why I'm aware in what's, what's, I, what's happening to me this very moment, internally, externally, because I have some lucidity in my dream. If that is true, If that is true, that I have much more awareness in my conduct, then when I'm meditating, it's much easier. Because meditation itself is a conduct. It's an activity. A formal activity where we are trying to bring awareness, presence. It's, you know, usually people, that's what I do. You sing the Guru Yoga, you say formally you are entering into meditation of awareness, and when you do the dedication, you say, now I'm allowed to not be aware. You don't say that, but then you are saying, okay, now I'm not aware. If, if that is true, then how long you meditate? Very little. This, so that means how long you're aware means very little. So if you are, if there is a more sense of natural sense of awareness in the meditation, where you are, a sense of self is very, how you say, 
pervasive, not occupying, then in the pardo, it's very natural to be aware. So, so dream, conduct, meditation, pardo. So dream, conscious, conscious in a dream, helping conscious in the conduct. That's what we want, right? And the dream, uh, being conscious and lucid in conduct, helping in meditation, being conscious and lucid in meditation, helping pardo. So all these, in the end, it's talking about a waking up, being conscious, being lucid, so that I'm, I'm not totally, don't have to live continuously in that sleep of ignorance. And particularly, I do not have to suffer continuously in that dream, through that dreams of samsara. That if I'm conscious and lucid, I have ability to change and be free and discover myself, my potentiality, enrich myself, and help others.